Jupiter isn't just a world, it's a system, and apart from Earth, perhaps the place we are most likely to find life. Since the 1970s, NASA has sent several probes to the Jovian system, and each time, our understanding of that far-off world has increased astronomically. Not only have we discovered that Jupiter has rings and many, many dozens of moons, but its four largest moons, the Galilean moons, which are worlds in their own right, have garnered tremendous interest by scientists. So far, we have examined Io and neighboring Europa. And in today's episode of Sky Story, we'll take a look at the third moon of Jupiter, aka Jupiter 3, better known as Ganymede. In the screen, lower left center, you can see the orbit of Ganymede in red, a somewhat irregular orbit that takes it between Europa and Callisto. It is far enough out from Jupiter that it receives much less radiation from its gas giant homeworld, but close enough in that it is still subject to Jupiter's magnetosphere as well as the gravitational tugging by the other Galilean moons. And that gravitational tugging may well create heat within Ganymede that allows for liquid water to exist beneath its surface. Ganymede is a huge moon, 5,268 kilometers in diameter. Here is Ganymede compared to Mars on the right. And this is Ganymede superimposed over Mars. And it is evident here that though Ganymede is a moon, it is a world in its own right. And due to its amazing composition, a world worthy of study. This year and next, two landmark missions are going to be launched toward Jupiter by both NASA and the European Space Agency. The Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, will be launched by ESA, and NASA is sending the Clipper, portrayed here. They will navigate by way of planetary gravity, using Jupiter and its surrounding moons to slip themselves into clever orbits that will take them close to the Galilean moons. The Clipper will especially explore Io and Europa, now scientists consider Europa to be particularly interesting because it holds a vast ocean with 2.5 times the water to be found on Earth and in direct contact with the mineral subsurface beneath. Combine that with a geothermal energy gradient and Europa has all the ingredients known to be necessary for life. But Ganymede is a remarkable world unto itself. And even compared to Europa, its oceans are truly, truly vast. In fact, data indicates that up to 46% of the total volume of Ganymede is water, giving it 25 times more water than Earth, or about 10 times the amount of water to be found on neighboring Europa. Some of that water is locked into a frozen crust of ice 150 kilometers and more thick, and below that ice, there may be indeed a vast saltwater ocean. Some models say that ocean could be 100 kilometers deep, and others as much as 500 kilometers. In this artist's rendition, we see one of those models, where beneath the crust is a single vast ocean, and below that what is called tetragonal ice, or simply ice 6. This is ice that is frozen not by temperature, but by pressure, where the intense pressure of such a deep ocean with a huge crust lying on top of it, compresses liquid water molecules into a solid. If this model is correct, it is very possible that Ganymede, despite its vast reserves of water, does not have life. Because the chemicals necessary for the chemistry of life would be forever locked away beneath the ice 6. But there is another very plausible model for the way water might exist underneath the surface of Ganymede. It is called, funnily enough, the Club Sandwich Model. In the Club Sandwich Model, deep layers of ice are separated by deep layers of ocean, meaning there are potentially several different oceans on Ganymede. If this is the case, the lowest ocean, in proximity to a mineral mantle and warmed by geothermal activity, very likely powered by tidal forces, may well be able to provide the chemicals and energy gradients necessary for life. Unfortunately, as these oceans are locked beneath 150 kilometers of ice crust, this may remain forever only conjecture. But when the JUICE probe and the NASA Clipper arrive there, who knows, we may find more definitive answers. The Clipper and JUICE will be the first spacecraft ever designed specifically to go to the Jovian system and ferret out these mysteries. 
You can't quite see Ganymede with the naked eye, but you can see it very easily with a decent pair of binoculars, a camera with a good zoom lens, or with a telescope. I shot this image of Jupiter just last summer using an SCT telescope set to a 1400 millimeter focal length. This wasn't even a serious shot, just a test shot while I was calibrating my camera. But even in this mere test shot, one can see Ganymede. It is that small bright fleck to the right of Jupiter. Ganymede is 778 million kilometers from the sun, so far away that it receives only about 1 30th the sunlight that our world does. That it can be seen from Earth with any kind of optical device is a testament to just how large it is. But regardless of a telescope's ability to pick up that moon and study it, no telescope, not even the great orbital scopes like the Hubble or the James Webb, can gain any meaningful detail, only a few scattered pixels. This is why missions like the Clipper and JUICE are so important. They will approach these moons as close as a mere 200 kilometers, revealing detail never before imagined. And Ganymede holds many other wonders besides the mystery of whether or not it holds life. Among other things, there is the question of how its amazing surface formed, bright in some places and dark in others. One theory states that deep in the chaos of its past, Regions of its surface were broken up, perhaps by volcanic activity during a time the moon's orbit was unstable, or perhaps through cataclysmic impacts, allowing some of the water of that ocean onto the surface where it froze again. At this point in time, it's impossible to be sure. What we do know is that those brighter, smoother regions don't have nearly as many impact craters as the darker regions. This tells us that they are newer than the darker regions and that something in the distant past caused the destruction of a great deal of Ganymede's surface. We also know that Ganymede has its own magnetic field. It is the only moon in our entire solar system that has a magnetic field. And while a deep undersea salty ocean may create it, there are other possibilities. That is one of the other great mysteries of Ganymede yet to be explored. It is the European Space Agency's mission, JUICE, that will focus on Ganymede, spending years in orbit around the world and only time will tell what mysteries it will be able to unlock for us. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world. In MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In Understory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in Sky Story, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.